ओम श्री साई राम आई ऑफर माई मोस्ट हम्बल प्रणाम्स एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ बिलवेड भगवान डियर स्वामी रेस्पेक्टेड एल्डर्स डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स दिस इज एन एक्सपीरियंस दैट आई हैड रेड इन अ साउथ अफ्रीकन जर्नल यू नो सो आई डोंट नो द नेम्स आई डोंट नो द ईयर्स बट इट वॉज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ अ साउथ अफ्रीकन डेवोटी whom swami had given an interview now he was a bit skeptical and therefore he had thought that i will ask swami for something very unique in order to prove to myself that you know the miracle that he is doing is genuine so when swami asked him in the interview room what do you want he said swami i want a watch swami immediately waved his palm he materialized a watch and he gave it to him this person looked at it it was a wonderful watch a branded watch no he thought this is a branded watch so swami must have purchased it somewhere right because uh, it doesn't have the brand sai store or anything like that so he said swami can i also have the invoice or bill for this watch from whichever store you picked it from and nonchalantly without batting an eyelid swami said yeah sure just a moment and then swami waved his hand <laughs> and gave him an invoice gave him the bill for that watch interestingly it was from a store that was from his own town back in south africa and he was like oh wow so swami has purchased this watch from south africa now after the interview got over when he came out after the trip to perthi got over he goes back to his home country he goes to south africa there he goes to this very address he wants to verify whether you know the bill in duplicate is there you know those days it was not digital so there would be a bill in duplicate and to his amazement he finds his bill in duplicate and the person at the store he says oh yes this i remember because something peculiar happened what happened he says the man who came had a strange afro kind of hairstyle and uh, he just was in a hurry to pick up the watch and leave but within 2 minutes he came running back and he said can i also have a bill i want this bill for this watch so that's why i remember this he said and uh, th- that was uh, a confirmation for him and see when we think of incidents like these we we understand that yanta matramuna evara telachina anta matrame neevu swami is that much as much as we think that he is what we think of him he reflects that on to us if we think of him as the supreme parabrahmam he is the supreme parabrahmam i say this because often people ask yes we know swami is divine swami is satguru swami is guru but but who actually is swami is swami narayana is swami uh, shiva is swami the father of christ is swami what do you think of swami just examine that in your heart that is what he is so swami adapts himself he molds himself into the image that we keep of him in our mind in our hearts so that we are delighted and so that we grow stronger in our attachment to him and that was how swami made the watch miracle for this south african devotee many have been the occasions when swami has given watches i am sure that many of you too would have received a watch which either swami materialized or swami gave or gifted multiple times swami has given a watch and it is very fairly common knowledge that swami would say the meaning of the watch is you have to watch your words watch your actions watch your thoughts watch your character watch your heart this is such common language that you ask any school kid studying in swami school and that kid will tell the full form of watch what i began to think about was is it because that the word the letters in the word form w a t c h that swami gave the acronym like that or is there something deeper beyond that as well you know why should words be first why actions next as we dive deep and as we try to get in sync with swami and pray to him for inspiration and insight 
some beautiful things emerge prema swarup lara you know it is not simply because of the acronym or simply because watch starts with w that swami starts by saying watch your words come to think of it the words are possibly the most easiest for us to control for us to watch you know however i may be feeling i might be feeling irritated or angry i can just choose not to speak and yet though among all the other things the words are the easiest for me to control it still requires some amount of effort so start with the easiest first whenever swami would give advice to students who would have to appear for the examinations he would tell this only that always start reading the question slowly and answer the ones that are the easiest because as you answer the easy ones your self confidence will grow and when the self confidence grows you will be able to even answer some tough ones which otherwise you did not know the answer for you know because that is the impact of confidence so here also swami starts with watch your words on this was one occasion where swami was giving what we call as the silent treatment or the cold treatment to one of the students swami was not looking at him swami was not speaking to him swami was ignoring him you know it that feels even more painful than swami scolding a wise person has said that the opposite of love is not hate it is indifference <laughs> so even when you are scolded by somebody you you still matter to that person that's why that person scolds but if that person is indifferent to you it's like yeah no love that is the feeling that you get and so swami would use this silent treatment and swami would say you know swami would say that when a road when a highway is under repair i take other roads not because i don't like this road but i want to allow the repair works to proceed quickly you you do that right you you block away a road and say this road is not for use because it's being repaired so those were the repair time but it would be terrible so this brother had written a letter to swami where he had said swami when will you stop torturing me that day swami came storming into the bhajan hall and told what is this that you have written what is it you have written do you know the meaning of the word torture and swami said torture is when you inflict pain on somebody and enjoy that person suffering that pain you may be pained but know that swami is also pained swami is not enjoying it be careful with your words and swami walked back that is why we have to watch <laughs> watch our words multiple times multiple examples are there where you know swami reminds us that we need to watch what we speak i remember another occasion where a student who was in form form is a term that is possibly borrowed from sport where a person in form seems to perform very well form and uh, your form and how you perform are linked so a student too who is in form seems to perform well in terms of getting interactions with swami so this person was getting attention from swami and swami used to speak to him and he said swami you are my mother you are my father you are my everything swami and swami said very happy swami seemed to be moved and so swami was very happy and this brother then felt even more happy that he had made swami happy with that and he continued it continued you know swami would speak to him now and then he was very happy a couple of days a few weeks maybe a couple of months passed swami uh, you know usually would interact with this boy regularly so this boy also decided when his parents had come to puttaparthi he went to swami and he said swami uh, my parents are here if you grant an interview you know it will be wonderful immediately swami's face changed and he turned his face and he walked away he began to ignore the student not talk to him and this boy was wondering what happened swami what is it like what did i say that upset you so much then when he got the chance to speak to swami swami told him you lied to me he said no swami i didn't lie to you really my parents have come why will i lie to you swami they have come and that's why i thought it will be nice and i said swami said not that you said i am your father mother everything then what father mother are you speaking about 
even we tell something to swami we may not take our word seriously he takes our word seriously he has more faith in us than we have faith in ourselves he has more faith in us than we have faith in him that is why it is so important that we watch our words we have to be very careful in the words that we use and for that swami gives a formula swami says before you speak first of all think if it is necessary there are four filters that swami says you must use before you speak before you use your words and the first filter swami says is it necessary you know once in thrai brindavan that is swami's residence at whitefield in bangalore uh, swami was sitting on the jhula and swami was just asking some questions swami would ask very interesting questions and very interesting answers would emerge i remember one such question swami you know spoke about how lord sri rama gave his ring to hanuman and said you give this to sita as proof that you are coming from me and while narrating that swami asked what question did sita ask hanuman when he gave her the ring <laughs> you know it's not very easy to find that answer and unless you are lord rama yourself possibly you can't answer it so all of us began to give some uh, answers because swami said the person who gives correct answer i will give a prize swami said so that incentive was too much so many people tried finally a student gave an answer as well i don't remember his answer now because the answer that swami gave later was so much different but that student who gave that answer got a ring swami materialized the ring for him and gave it to him <laughs> but then you know when swami answered it was so interesting swami said that sita mother sita asked hanuman tell me from which finger did lord rama take this ring from you know when swami said this swami continue before that we were just thinking yes swami from the ring finger that's where you know when you get married that's where you put the ring right and hanuman replies mother he took it from he took it out from his thumb and then swami said sita felt very happy and and then it continued you know she gave her chuda money to hanuman and it went on like that you know i'm sure you're also wondering what is this the fact was that lord rama was missing sita so much he was like just as the devotee thinks of the lord the lord thinks of the devotee sita was constantly thinking of rama so rama was constantly thinking of sita so much intensely he was thinking of her he had given up food drink and barely he would maintain himself and therefore he had grown so thin that the ring which once fitted on his ring finger had now to be put on his thumb and that is why mother sita smiled because there is no greater joy for a devotee than knowing that my lord is also thinking of me you know my lord is missing me <laughs> so though ideally mother sita should get worried that oh lord rama rama has become so thin how it is she felt one small joy in her heart that oh my lord is thinking of me he misses me that's why right. you know after that in the hostel we would call this as sita syndrome sita syndrome is when you feel joy in your heart when your loved one is not so happy because the cause of that unhappiness is because he or she is missing you so you feel very good <laughs> you know sita syndrome this is what we had uh, thought of anyway so like the swami would ask different questions so on one occasion when he had asked a question not one occasion any occasion when swami asks a question everybody is eager to give an answer so when somebody would give an answer swami would say hey did i ask you did i ask you swami would sometimes ask even pointedly you tell ha tell me what do you think of this swami would ask a question hey, immediately there would be a chorus answer swami did i ask you all why did you open your mouth yes these are all small instances but it it reminds us before we speak one moment you have to think is it necessary is it necessary swami has not asked me when swami is asking somebody else i have to keep my mouth shut if we extrapolate this into our day to day lives it will enrich us help us so much that is the first filter second filter swami would say is you think whether it is true it is necessary now you have to speak but before you speak think if it is true you have to speak the truth and there will be some situations where speaking the truth is very difficult swami would say at such times that you must have yukti yukti meaning a knack you must have the intelligence to speak in a manner that uh, you don't upset anybody at the same time you're not telling untruth and swami would give the example of a person in meditation who had taken the vow of uh, 
ahimsa you know he wanted to perform ahimsa he wanted to be he want and he was in lost in meditation at the same time he is not going to speak untruth he sees a deer running in front of him and a hunter chasing the deer so the deer runs then the hunter comes and he asks sir can you tell me where the deer went now if he tells the truth where the deer went the hunter is going to hunt it down which destroys his vow of ahimsa but if he says that no i don't know it destroys his vow of truth so swami says this person said dear sir the eyes that saw the deer cannot speak and the mouth which can speak did not see the deer making it very clear that i know the answer but i don't want to tell you that's all <laughs> so swami would give this as an example as to uh, speaking the truth even at any cost but ensuring that you don't speak untruth so that is the second filter is it necessary is it the truth third is is it kind that is also something some truths are bitter you see the desha kala paristhiti the time the circumstance the place and see if it is kind to reveal it or reveal it in a manner with compassion and kindness in fact uh, when the sanatana samskruti museum on top of the vidyagiri hill you know the first museum heritage eternal heritage museum was inaugurated great beautiful blessing swami himself wrote his definition of each of these values satya dharma shanti prema and ahimsa and they are so unique and beautiful i don't have time to go into each of them but i would recommend that you you know be diligent in reading the eternal companion because starting from june <laughs> every month one one of those you know so beautifully swami makes us understand we understand what is satya what is dharma what is shanti prema and ahimsa we have uh, we are uh, planning to work on this and in the eternal companion every month bring out one of these values so just giving you a sneak or uh, sneak peek into ahimsa while speaking of ahimsa you know swami says see many times parents scold their children they even discipline them is that himsa swami is asking is that himsa swami says no that is ahimsa why because when there is no hatred in the heart and the motives are all altruistic then those words and even actions action is the next uh, letter in watch we'll come to that but swami says those words and actions are ahimsa only so you see that is what it is so beautiful right such uh, sometimes it bothers us so much that too with modern times especially in western countries where you know Uh, there are cases where children can even call the cops on their parents <laughs> whereas in more eastern countries there is disciplining of children going on you don't know where is the line to draw you know swami says that's where it is what is the intention is it to correct is it altruistic so so you see that is swami's definition of ahimsa swami says such disciplining of children by the parent or by the teacher swami says it is not himsa it is ahimsa because it is to correct them put them on the right path the immediate present might look little difficult for them but this will ensure that the future is perfect you don't want future tense you want future perfect so that is the third thing is it uh, necessary is it true is it kind and swami finally says the fourth thing is will it improve upon the silence is speaking better than keeping silent many times in silence you can convey you know i uh, remember multiple incidents but uh, keeping the time in view i will move on to the next which is watch your actions watch your words is as i said watch your words is the easiest among all it is so easy to just keep the mouth shut don't talk whatever happens i won't talk you can decide like that and this is one common sadhana that many students in the hostel would do mauna vrata or the vow of silence they will decide that thursday morning from 6 o'clock till evening 6 o'clock we won't speak so come what may they would keep it you know sometimes they have to they are forced to communicate so they write on a piece of paper and show but but they just preserve and conserve their energy and they just don't speak and you know when we practice this i myself feel that i should start practicing this <laughs> in like intermittent fasting we need intermittent maunam when we do this just like intermittent fasting keeps us healthy and fit keeps us well toned our spirit also is well toned and kept healthy if we practice intermittent maunam so that is uh, about 
uh, silence once we finish this we move on to the next which is watch your actions why it becomes important now again it is tougher than curbing words but it is the second step just think of it whenever we curb ourselves we restrain or refrain ourselves from speaking something you are very irritated you want to speak you just hold back that is going to show itself as an action sometime later it will happen that is why whenever it comes to action once again just like the words what is the motive what is the motive it's important to examine that that is what is meant by constantly being vigilant of our action watching your action and you know when we watch our action the rewards are immense this happened possibly when i was in 11th grade and uh, we there was a free class the, the teacher had not come and therefore we thought we will sit and just play the, a game of dumb charades in dumb charades a student has to act out a person has to act out what is the hidden word or or a term and the others have to guess so it's a team game now there was this one brother one classmate of mine shridhar he was going on uh, you know doing a kind of little bit of uh, if i can say cheating you know he was he was uh, trying to let them know what is the word and once or twice i told him hey don't do that me don't learn and next time when i saw him again indicating i got very angry you know i just hit him on his head i just lifted my hand and slapped his head and he reeled under that he was holding his head and he looked at me and now i got ready because i know now he's also going to swing his hand it's going to be a brawl now it's going to be a fight strangely neither did he speak anything nor did he do anything he just held his head in pain and just turned his face away and when he did that you know it might sound strange but this is the fact i began to feel so horrible with him i actually would have felt better had he just hit me back or at least shouted at me you know but him not doing anything him just refraining from that action you know he all said and done he kept watch over his action it made me feel so 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 horrible i i i didn't know i was just like oh god he he didn't do anything it kills you know this is the power of ahimsa this is also the power of silence sometimes you know when you when somebody speaks uglyly about you when somebody is talking rot about you somebody is doing actions terrible you just bear you you when you just bear it in silence you know and just ignore it possibly <laughs> hurts or makes the person feel so repentant i felt very repentant i felt so repentant that i felt swami i want to i want to give something to him you know as a way of seeking apology and uh, those years swami used to give us an opportunity whenever he goes near devotee side and materialize vibhuti we could rush to swami with a handkerchief so i thought swami today please bless this handkerchief of mine swami and when you use it when you create vibhuti you use it you wipe your hand on it i will go and gift this to shridhar and seek apology that was my thought you know what happened that day those were the days when swami used to give darshan in the purnachandra auditorium because in the kulvant hall sai kulvant hall that gold uh, foiling work was going on swami created vibhuti for a person who was sitting just 2 feet ahead of me and then to another person who was just 2 feet behind me along the lines so i got the opportunity to offer my handkerchief to swami not once but twice the only time it has happened in my <laughs> what what i can say days with uh, in the physical presence of bhagwan that within the same 10 minutes swami has accepted kerchief from me twice and the way swami had you know materialized vibhuti and wiped his hand one side i could see a clear mark of vibhuti and as i had another clear mark of vibhuti such a precious handkerchief i felt like oh swami maybe i'll <laughs> i'll retain this handkerchief and tomorrow you bless i'll give another one this is a very special handkerchief right a very special one but still i felt no no i had a promise made as a promise made i have to give this to him interestingly because it was a very unique thing that had happened that on the within the same 5 minutes the same boy had given handkerchief twice everyone else had also noticed so there were a few uh, classmates of mine who came into the air when lucky fellow man no oh, toys a uh, handkerchief to swami toys lucky ha huh? 
Shridhar also had noticed. And I went to him and said, Shridhar, I'm so sorry. He said, it's okay. I said, no, no, no. This handkerchief is yours. He said, this is... I said, yeah, this is that handkerchief. And I told him, no, I had prayed to Swami and it is only for you that Swami did this. And we both embraced each other, you know. We embraced each other. It felt so wonderful. And, uh, you know, he was telling that, I'm so glad that I didn't hit you back, man. What a gift I have got, you know. And I was thinking, wow, look at that. And that is what I think it... it it seemed like it seems like a little thing, but every time we are able to keep watch over action, we are rewarded by the divine in ways that we cannot imagine. Uh, one might feel that this happened in the physical presence of Swami, but we are all mature enough and we have all experienced that there is not any difference between the physical presence and the omnipresence. The power is the same. And so even to this day, I firmly believe that if I keep a watch over my actions, Swami will reward me and that is such a great incentive. From actions, you know, in fact, uh, speaking on watching actions, there's one more aspect I must mention. Swami would often say, often quote a, a poem when he would begin his discourses. Swami would say, um, Asthiram jivanam loke, asthiram yauvanam dhanam, asthiram dhara putradi, satyam kirti dvayam sthiram. Meaning, uh, youth is impermanent. Uh, asthiram ji, uh, life is impermanent. Your wealth is impermanent. Your wife, children, relations, all are impermanent. The only two things that are permanent are truth and fame. Truth and reputation. Satyam and Kirti. So I used to wonder, uh, you know, Satya and Dharma makes sense. Satya and Prema. Why Satya and Kirti? Why truth and reputation? Today, my understanding is that it is important to be good. It is important who we are. But it is also important to appear good. It is also important who we appear to be. Who we are is the truth, Satyam. Who we appear to be is our reputation, is our Kirti. Both these are permanent and therefore we have to take care of both. And therefore, when Swami says, watch your action, it is not just about ensuring I do right actions, but it is also about ensuring that I do it in a manner that it is also perceived correctly, you know. See, we do our best. There will be occasions when we'll do right actions, but we'll get perceived wrongly. That Swami will take care because he knows our intentions. But as far as possible, we should try. But the worst is to appear to be right and good, but actually not be good. That is hypocrisy. That is terrible. And we are fooling ourselves. It's a sure short path to ruin and our downfall. That is something to be avoided. But when we watch our actions, the other aspect, as I said, is also to ensure that uh, it is also portrayed in a manner that the goodness and the correctness that has gone into doing the action is also portrayed in that manner to the onlookers and the world. The third, we come to watch your thoughts. Now, this is something at a very subtle level it's very difficult because how do we watch our thoughts like even as i'm speaking here there are so many thoughts going on in my head so many things is the connection stable i hope people are able to listen i hope the recording is fine what is that noise that is coming out there so many i mean even when uh, we are focused at doing something there are so many thoughts so how do we watch our thoughts well we actually just watch them. Uh, I will come to that aspect later. But let me narrate an incident that I read in the autobiography of a yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda. So in that, he writes how when he is sitting one day for meditation, he is meditating. Then his Guruji, Yukteswar Giriji, comes to him and he is standing there. And his Guruji would had this, uh, you know, kind of habit of always disturbing him in his meditation. Now, when he's just thinking of meditating, he'll tell, Mukunda, come here. He'll tell, Guruji, I'm meditating. Guruji will tell, enough of your meditation, you come here. So, he would always feel, why is this Guru against me? You know, whenever I try to meditate, he comes and ruins my meditation. So, this day as he sat in meditation, luckily, his Guru did not come to disturb him. You know, funny it feels, right? <laughs> like you meditate and you feel your Guru is disturbing you. So, he sat, he sat in his meditation. A mosquito lands on his thigh and starts sucking in blood. That 
pinch he feels that pinch he feels that bite and his instinct is to just lift his hand and swat and kill that mosquito or at least drive it away but in an instant he just controls no 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 leave it leave it let it be let it be let it be and he feels very happy with it he has recorded it in that book he feels very happy yes i have mastered it and then comes that voice mukunda <laughs> and like oh god now what and the guru ji says why are you stopping go go let your hand swing and kill that mosquito and now he opens his eyes and he says guru ji but i controlled he says no what you controlled the mo you already killed it in your mind you already killed it that's done the deed is done the the action is complete your, your hand is just following you might as well do it that that is the power of the mind that is why the thought when what we do it in thought we are actually doing it in action we remember it that's why nama smarana is so powerful when we are with swami in our thoughts we are with swami only in fact krishna tells arjuna that <laughs> arjuna you don't have to worry they are already killed all the kauravas are killed you just have to follow you are doing a follow up action that's all don't think you are killing <laughs> you are not killing they are already killed how that's what it is because once the divine sankalpa is there it's already done it's already done you just have to go through the motions that's all so that that is watching the thought there's a beautiful incident narrated by brother gopal indreshwar from the uh, uh, gopal indreshwar sirohi he is from the rajmata's family jamnagar and he was narrating uh, when he uh, he was narrating how there was this a uh, person managing the accounts of their family and because he was in that privileged position he misused that position and he had swindled some funds and brother gopal was very very upset with this so one day as he sat in the portico in prashanti nilayam he just did what he was capable of doing that's all he felt so angry on this person that who had, that had swindled So as he closed his eyes he landed one blow on his face because he felt like smashing his skull he then landed another blow he like what is this he had actually written about this person he had written a letter and given it to swami also but nothing you know swami had not taken any action or apparently done anything so he was like so frustrated and all that pent up frustration was just suddenly the interview room doors opened swami looked gopal come in swami called him. So he got up and went in, and then Swami asked him inside, "What are you doing?" Swami, "What am I doing? I'm doing nothing, Swami. I'm just sitting silently there." No, you are committing murder, not once but thrice. Commit, Swami. Swami said, "What are you thinking? You punch like that, he will die. Don't you know? One, when you do it in the mind, that is what it is." Swami, you will have to face the sin of three murders. Oh and then Swami tells, but I understand what you are feeling. You are very upset, right? Do you want to really punch him? Wow, you know, Swami is giving a license. He says, yes, Swami, I want to punch him. Swami says, go ahead, punch him. No, he didn't need further prodding. Felt okay. My karma will also be excused because Swami himself is telling to do this. So as he closed his eyes, suddenly he is transported to on top of a cliff. He is on top. He is on top of that cliff, and below, down below, is the ocean. The waves are coming and hitting, and there are jagged rocks, sharp like the teeth of a shark. They're all there. And here is this person standing and clutching something closely like this, and trying to see where he can escape. And Gopal sees this is what it is, and he gives a. hard punch so hard that this person is tumbling backward and he's going to fall let him fall let him die man let she deserves all of that and as he's doing this he hears swami's voice and swami is there beside him swami says look in his hands all this happens in a fraction of a second right so when he looks at his arms what is he clutching he's clutching a baby a baby that is so sweet so cute so innocent so delicate yet petrified because even though it doesn't know what is happening it seems to feel that this is the end 
and seeing that baby gopal's heart melts and he says oh no 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 the baby should no the baby can't die but but the baby is dependent on the father on this person so he rushes ahead and holds as this person is falling off the cliff he holds him and then it is an intense struggle trying to pull him back pull him back pull him back finally he is back and gopal is tired he lays down on the floor there the man is back up and the baby is there and gopal is feeling so happy that oh my god thank god and then he is back he is back in the interview room with swami <laughs> and swami says how are you feeling yes, swami i am feeling very happy but you you actually help the person what do you feel towards him nothing swami it's all fine it's all fine and then swami says the karma between you and him is over now don't worry you will also be fine it's all done and then swami told him that see when you have this intense whatever negative towards anybody all you have to do is think of anything think of swami think of a situation think of anything that brings out oozing love in your heart and when that love is there just envelop that person in that love bathe that person in that love that's it it will disconnect the karma that exists between you and that person it will be gone and you will be free what beautiful revelation what a beautiful thing but what a powerful reminder on the power of our thoughts how careful we should be we have to watch our thoughts because it is so so subtle it influences that's why swami would say keep good company because it's not what a people are doing it's not like i have to uh, join a rioting gang to become bad the people might not even be speaking but if i am in the company of people who are sitting and thinking bad thoughts i will get influenced swami would say how when uh, rama lakshmana and sita are in their exile they are walking through the forest at one point in time lakshmana looks and tells rama what nonsense have you done rama why did you go what is this dharma that you talk about what is this dharma that has brought us into the forest you are supposed to be the emperor you are down here you don't even have footwear to wear what is this dharma this dharma is nonsense rama and i am also like one fool i listen to you why did i listen to you you lost your senses did i also lose my senses and Ra- lakshmana is just venting out he is just venting out he is so upset rama is calm he says it's okay lakshmana come and lakshmana is like <laughs> what is this? this rama is so inact he doesn't do any action only what is this but after some time suddenly lakshmana feels very repentant he says what on earth did i do what did i speak how can i speak like this he says brother please forgive me and rama says no lakshmana it's not your fault then if it's not my fault then what then rama says you know the area that the Rama tells brother Lakshmana that you know the region that we were passing through that is belonging to a demoness you know Swami even mentioned the name of the demoness and therefore you got such thoughts which are about giving up dharma but don't worry those are not yours that is the impact of thoughts that is the impact of vibrations and that is why you know even swami would say you have to be so careful because all what is the source of all the thoughts in the head swami would say head is because of the blood blood is because of food that's why swami would emphasize on having satvic food see forget all other debates swami says if you are interested if your priority in life is spirituality 100% you have to give up non non vegetarian food give up totally give up totally alcohol don't say no i just drink socially no 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 drinking no drinking alcohol at all no eating meat at all no smoking nothing because these will affect your spiritual growth and progress though you may not get cancer or any other disease and food also swami would say that see it is not just about uh, eating vegetarian food you have to ensure patra shuddhi patra shuddhi means cleanliness of the vessel in which it is cooked padartha shuddhi cleanliness of the vegetables or raw materials that are used paka shuddhi purity of the cooking process at a physical level but at a spiritual level purity of the farmer who has grown these uh, vegetables purity of the seller who has sold it to you purity of the cook who is cooking this 
and that's why Swami would say it is so difficult to ensure all of this, right? That's why chant Brahmarpanam before you have your food. You offer it to God. When you offer it to God, it becomes naivedyam, an offering to God. And then what you consume is prasadam, just like vibhuti, you know. Prasadam is a gift from God. A gift from God is free from all the negative vibrations. And that is the reason why we have to chant Brahmarpanam. It's all part of watching our thoughts. Otherwise, you just see. Depending on the kind of food you eat, some, our digestive system sometimes responds. But the kind of thoughts we get also, rajasic thoughts, tamasic thoughts. Thoughts of desire, greed, lust, anger, they increase with some kinds of food. So, that is why, you know, Swami says possibly thought as a third, third level because it's tough. Words are easiest relatively, next are actions, then we come to thoughts. If we are able to do these three correctly and properly and Sufficiently successfully, we will be able to watch our character. Character is something that Swami emphasizes on again and again. Swami says the end of education is character. If we think deeply about it, the word end there has two meanings. One is end, the goal. The, the goal of education is character. If you say you are educated, you must be a person of character. Otherwise, whatever be your degrees, you are not educated at all. You don't have Vidya. That is what Swami would say. Vidya is the Sanskrit term for, uh, which is loosely or weakly translated as education. And the other meaning of end is Swami would say, that is how you know that it has culminated. The, the One is the goal, one is the completion. End. The end of education is character. If you have completed your education, you have character. The goal of education, why you are studying, it is not to earn money, not to earn degrees, not to use your degree certificates as a begging bowl. That is what Swami would say. No, that is not the goal of education. The goal of education is to achieve character. And you know you are uh, educated if you have got character. That is why Swami would say, if money is lost, nothing is lost, health is lost, something is lost, if character is lost, everything is lost. He would narrate the story of Emperor Prahalada. Prahalada, you know, is the son of Hiranyakashipu, the wicked demon king. But he, Prahalada had such a pristine character and devotion for God that uh, Lord took Narsimha Avatar, annihilated uh, uh, Hiranyakashipu and saved Prahalada and made him the emperor who ruled for thousands of years. But Swami says there was once Indra who wanted to feel superior to Prahalada, but he could never defeat him. So he comes in disguise and asks him for the boon. And Prahlada says, what is it that you want? He says, can I have your character? And Swami then goes on to narrate how when Prahlada gives his character, he sees one luminous being leaving. Who are you? He says, he says, I am Dharma. If you are not having character, uh, Dharma cannot stay and Dharma has to leave. I am not able to recollect the exact order, but Swami says that one by one, wealth, compassion, everything, prosperity, all luminous beings start leaving. Why? Because Prahlada gave up character. And Swami would say, if you give up your character, every, that's why Swami says, if character is lost, everything is lost. And that's why it is so important that we watch our character. And watching our character is actually a result of watching all the three, the initial three, words, actions and thoughts. When we are able to do them perfectly, we are able to watch our character as well. Speaking of character, I am reminded of an incident. This happened uh, in the early stages when Swami was uh, starting the Mirpuri College of Music, right? The co music college there. Swami was taking a lot of interest uh, in this music college. And Swami had said that music is the royal highway that leads man to God. And I want to, you know, that is the sole objective of Swami's avatarhood. The sole objective why he made any institution that he made. So that man can connect and reach God. Swami didn't find people to populate his institutions. Swami built an institution for sake of people to progress towards God. That is what it is. That is why if we look at it, there doesn't seem to be a kind of a strategic plan, expansion plan and all in his mission. He just sees this individual needs this, I will get it. If a hospital is needed for this individual to come to me and grow in love and devotion, I will build a hospital. That is how Swami has done, you know. If we think deeply, this is my understanding. So, yes, 
so when the music college was uh, in the early years it it had to be inaugurated and done swami had called in some very very uh, famous and popular musicians in for an interview one among them was the uh, santur maestro pandit shiv kumar sharma ji um, unfortunately he is no longer with us he is merged in the lotus feet of bhagwan but he was there with swami and uh, swami asked him tell me if somebody has to become a maestro has to become very good in music how much should they practice so swami about 15 to 16 hours a day to start with you know in the beginning that's what you have to do 15 to 16 hours a day practice swami said but you know my boys utna samay they don't have that much time he agreed he said of, of course swami yeah students here are studying and yeah they will not have that much time to do practice but tell me how is it how is it that they uh, how how do they sing what do you think of their musical abilities he said swami honestly it's very beautiful swami when they sing it's very beautiful swami asked how how is it so beautiful he said swami because they have that bhava the feeling it is the feeling that makes it so beautiful they may not be so skilled they may not be so talented but the feeling with which they sing no it's so beautiful swami bhava that's what he said it reminds me of uh another incident that was narrated by a senior brother of mine wherein swami had organized a kavi sammelan a kavi sammelan is a gathering of poets so the who's who of poets from andhra pradesh possibly had all assembled in swami's presence and they were you know reciting poems with which were very dexterous which were very you know which re- required a lot of skill and intellectual ability to make and the whole audience was in raptures like how beautifully they were praising swami they were all clapping after this whole thing got over uh, one of the devotees uh, who was uh, close by seeing the whole thing asked swami swami uh, how was the kavi sammelan wasn't it fantastic swami just kept silent he said swami everybody loved it how beautifully they described you and yet swami you didn't seem to be enjoying it on the contrary you it it appeared to me as if you are waiting for it to end why swami what was bad in that swami said no no you see these people keep composing and making these poem poems so regularly you pay them money tomorrow they will sing glories about you they will write poems in your honor no big deal in that swami said but you know my children they will write four five lines they will write in some multiple languages it may not have meter it may not have rhyme rhythm nothing no rhyme or reason but you know love is my form no reason for love no season for love the feeling with which they do i enjoy those poems so much i miss those poems even as i share i get emotional because swami swami all his life and even now just thirsts for love you know nothing else he bothers about if he have if he were to think about qualifications or anything else who how we could we have qualified swami says if you need me you deserve me you love me you deserve me we have been blessed enough we have been blessed to love him and when we love him he just accepts us and that is what it is you know that is why he is called bhava priya not bahya priya he doesn't love the externalities bahya he loves the bhava the feeling and when these poets poets give their poems out of with bhava he liked it and that is why that is why even pandit shiv kumar sharma ji told swami that day that swami they have bhava that feeling that is why and then swami put another question to him swami asked him how do they get that bhava how do you get bhava and he was just thinking now what do you answer for this swami only gave the reply swami gave the answer swami said it comes from character character is what gives bhava and what is character watching words actions and thoughts a uh, summation of all this is watching character the first book in the vahini series that swami wrote see swami wrote the vahini series as a series of articles in the sanatana sarathi later on they were all collated and made into each of the vahinis that we know the first one that swami wrote is prema vahini and 
if you actually pick up prema vahini and start reading you will barely find the word prema mentioned in that whole book prema never figures you know what figures prominently character swami says in the first chapter itself people think knowledge is power no character is power swami says character is power character is destiny swami would say so a character reap a destiny character is so important so critical that the entire prema vahini is about character watch your words watch your actions watch your thoughts watch your character these four satya dharma shanti prema watch your words satya watch your actions dharma watch your thoughts shanti watch your character prema hey, character is prema yeah prema vahini is all about character it is the overflowing love unless we have character we can't have love for god we can't have love at all with that we come to the final fifth one watch your heart what is meant by watch your heart i try to read search the internet search different books where swami explains in detail about where is it that swami has explained in detail about all of these in my search so far i couldn't find i was just wondering swami with this itself everything is covered right watch your words watch your action watch your thoughts watch your character if you are watching the character and it's done it's done swami what is there to watch the heart that dear brothers and sisters is the final stage because all of this i feel i am watching i am taking care i am doing this i am doing that i am i i is there i feel i am the doer and god is a witness who is just you know as per my actions i am rewarded or punished god is just a witness this is what we believe right this is what we believe we are all doers we are all actors and god is a witness god is eternal witness that's how we call him sarvada sakshi bhutam but when we come to watch the heart we go back to what krishna told arjuna arjuna they are already dead <laughs> the kauravas are already annihilated you just have to go through the motions that one statement you know it strikes me because there god is clearly telling i am the doer you are a witness you just witness so what are you celebrating about you didn't do anything i did what are you depressed about you didn't do anything wrong i am doing everything when it comes to watching the heart in my opinion in my understanding it is this it is about giving up that i finally you know i my character no my no my character what is my character not my words not my thought it is not my words it is all swami's words it is not my action it is swami's action it is not my thoughts it is swami's thoughts it is nothing nothing pristine about my character nothing great about me it is all swami it is not me it is swami swa means atma swami would say swa is atma swami when i am one with the atma when me is with atma it becomes swami that is watching the heart to be a witness and when we are a witness the proof they say the proof of the pudding lies in eating the proof of knowing that i am watching my heart is how unaffected i am in trials and tribulations sukha dukke samaye kritva labha labhau jaya jayo whether in sukha or dukha in in pleasures or pain in sorrow labha labhau in profit or loss jaya jayo victory and defeat if i am equanimous i am fine i am equanimous why not because i am putting efforts to be equanimous because i have put efforts and i have realized that i am just a witness i am just being i'm just existing i'm just watching that is the ultimate stage and that's why h is put in the last i began by asking whether it was just an acronym that matched and swami made the divine master plan has multiple layers it's like the onion you open a layer there's another layer another layer and as we delve deeper and deeper we get more and more meaning more and more understanding dear swami we are so grateful to you for everything whatever we do swami will never never be enough to pay back this debt of gratitude the only way i can do for you is if i become you swami and that is the ultimate state right to watch the heart be with us swami as you always are 
And when I say be with me, I'm saying this, Swami, just for my own satisfaction. Be with us, be with me as we watch our words, as we watch our actions, as we watch our thoughts, as we watch our character and ultimately watch our heart and realize that you and we, you and I are one. We move from I to we to he which is you. Thank you, Swami. Thank you to all the instruments of Swami. Jai Sai Ram.